So I consider myself a leader. I uh, lead a lot of different things in my professional life. Um, I lead different businesses. I lead different kind of initiatives. I lead different projects. And even in my field of research, I'm considered a leader. Um, and being a leader is something that's uh, it's been kind of part of my life um, even since I was a child. I remember uh, when my brother and I used to play uh, pretend, uh, one of the kind of, I guess, characters, scenarios that we used to pretend uh, is that we were the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And so if you have that as a reference, great. If you don't know what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are, if you just Google that uh, phrase or TMNT, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just this fictitious uh, superhero group. Anyway, so uh, when we would play pretend as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I was always either Leonardo or Donatello. So Leonardo was the leader and Donatello was the brainy guy. Uh, my brother was always Raphael or Michelangelo, which were the kind of goofballs and the, uh, I don't know, troublemakers. Uh, and so even since I was a child, I had like this sense of, ooh, I am a leader. That's my role. That's my kind of part of my identity. And I carried that into my, uh, to my schoolwork as well. So whenever I was working in groups or in teams with other people, it was kind of a natural feeling for me to take sort of the lead, to take the initiative at least. If I wasn't kind of ostensibly the leader or kind of formally the leader or even informally the leader, I would always try to take that first step towards moving the group forward forward in some, uh, in some significant way. And since I was relatively smart, I was always kind of looked at as uh, someone who could kind of take and move things forward a little bit or help guide the group. And so I was always uh, kind of seen at, in that role, seen as a leader in, in coming up, growing up. Uh, and then, of course, that kind of took shape in my career as my career started to evolve. Even when I was very early in my career, people would uh, look to me for advice and guidance. They would look to me for uh, taking that initiative. And it's served me really well. I, I'm not necessarily kind of fit for leadership, but I'm very happy to take the lead whenever the, the role demands it, whenever that uh, situation demands it. Uh, and I had really good role models, really good leaders that were role models for me, especially when I was young. My mother and father were both leaders. My mother was an entrepreneur. She owned several businesses throughout her life. My dad was in the military. He was an officer, so he was automatically kind of formally in a leadership position. And of course, my teachers growing up were all really uh, inspirational for me as leaders in their own right, especially the ones going into college and university. I got to work very closely as a research assistant and a teaching assistant for the scholars and the academics that were at my university that were really at the top of their field and they were really doing amazing and really uh, important work. And so that was also a great opportunity for me to see how different leadership styles kind of play out and that there isn't really just one mode of a leader. We're often given that from media, like there's just one model for what a leader is and it often fits that kind of military model of leadership. But in reality, there are a lot of different models for leadership. And uh, one of the things I learned during university was that leaders kind of come in two forms. There's formal leadership where uh, it's, a, it's because of the position they occupy, they're a leader. So it might be your manager or your department head or your, um, I don't know, the president of the company, right? They're leaders because that's their formal designation. And then there are informal leaders. There are people who kind of lead by influence. So you might be in a meeting and you might have the formal leader who's leading the meeting, but then there's somebody that everybody kind of looks to, to, to read the situation, to kind of get an emotional uh, reaction to what's being said, what's being talked about. And so that person can be a leader too, even though they're not formally acknowledged as a leader. So I think as we're kind of evolving what we think of as a leader and taking apart that kind of silhouette of what we imagine a leader is and looking at the different spectrum of leaders, um, what I had uh, uh, the opportunity to do last year was to lead a uh, research project on uh, leadership in the tech sector and look specifically at gender disparities, so uh, gender inequalities in leadership. And so we took a sample of men and sample of women and we surveyed them. We tried to understand how they identify as leaders. And one of the things we found is that women often identify themselves as being uh, as mentorship, being a strong part of their leadership style. They also identified themselves as being a lot more hands-on in terms of their leadership style. And they, they saw themselves as being visionary in their leadership styles. Now, I'm not gonna get into the limitations of the study or anything like that. If you want to 
check that out, go ahead um, and I'll post the uh, link to the report along with this uh, episode description. But the important point I want to make here is that leadership takes a number of different uh, kind of uh, ways of existing and that what we often think of as a leader, as this kind of silhouette, what we imagine that leadership is, can also take a whole spectrum of other um, uh, forms. And so when we're looking around us and we're trying to identify what is a leader, who is a leader in our lives, we should acknowledge that spectrum, that the leadership takes a full range of uh, ways of expressing itself, ways of existing. Uh, and if you're a leader, if you identify as a leader, that's awesome. Good for you. I think that's a really important role that we have. But remember that leadership isn't necessarily uh, just stepping up and taking that role. It's also something that you have to look for in the people who are working with you. So if they don't, uh, if they're not following you, if they're not following your lead, uh, then the problem is uh, that you've not taken the time to understand where they're coming from and what their needs are. And if you're someone that looks to others to be leaders, uh, there's always opportunities for you to give them input. I value input from the people I work with more than anything else, and especially critical input. Uh, I always try to surround myself with people who don't just say, yes, Anthony, I want to do this and move, but actually take the time to think critically about what I'm asking them and push back when it doesn't make sense or when there's something that seems off or it just doesn't quite work with what they imagined they should be doing. Um, that sort of critical insights are invaluable to a leader. Uh, and so I hope that whatever role you choose or whatever roles you that, that exist in your life, that you grow to, accustomed to those roles, but you do take that opportunity to look at the leaders around you, try to understand them, and try to understand the ways in which you can give them input and advice.